To detect taps on screen, we need something called a listener. Since we want to detect taps on the button, we need to set that listener on the button. And the way we're going to do it is this. We're going to use our roll button, put a dot after it, and Android Studio will already suggest to set an on-click listener on the button. This is exactly what we wanted to do. You don't have to type any of this code out if you hit tab and use autocomplete to insert it for you. Now that we've specified we want to set an on-click listener on the roll button, all that's left to do is create the listener. So type new and then capital O-N and Android Studio will already suggest to create the on-click listener for you. Hit tab on your keyboard and you should see Android Studio insert this block of code. Now every time the roll button is pressed, the code in between these two curly braces will get executed. At the moment, this is empty, so let's add something here and test out our app. We're going to add a very simple log statement to print to our console and check if our button is working. Just type log.d, then put down the name of the app, and have a message here. The button has been pressed. Excellent. The red squiggly line is showing that we're missing the semicolon at the end. I'm going to add that now. And here we go. Now's the time to plug in your Android device if you've got one. I'm going to be running my app in an emulator so you can see what's going on. But if you've got an Android device, plug it in, click on the Android monitor, and it should show up here. With some messages scrolling in this window here that show you what's going on on the device. I'm going to come up here to the Run menu and click Run App, but you can also press this green Play button. And as you can see, I've got nothing plugged in at the moment, but your device should show up here. So I'm going to fire up one of the emulators that I've already configured. I can tell you that in previous versions of Android Studio, this thing used to really take a long time. It's gotten a lot faster, but it's it's still no match for the uh, iPhone simulator. But Google's working on it to make it faster, that's for sure. For those of you who are running things in an emulator, you can keep it open. You don't need to close it every time you rerun the app. So you only need to wait once until it boots up. Then you can just keep it in the background and run the apps on it. Come on. Come on. Okay, great, so the device is booted up. And here's my app. Brilliant. I'm gonna pull this over here. And I'm gonna switch the window here to show the Android monitor. And I can see for the device, I've got my emulator listed. I'm filtering the messages inside the log hat, inside this window here, by my app. So I'm only gonna show the messages that pertain to my app. And I'm going to show all the messages, verbose. OK, so I've got my app running in my emulator. And I'm going to test out my button. When I tap on the button, I'm expecting that all the instructions between these two curly braces will get executed. And if I press it again, I should see it again. So every time I press this button, I will see this message in my log cat. Log messages are very handy for checking up what's going on inside our app. We're able to see in this window here which bits of code get executed. All log messages have a severity level. And you can filter how serious a particular message is by clicking on this dropdown, and you, which you can change from verbose to debug to info, to, as well as to error. But, so by selecting error, I only see log messages that report errors. In our case, we've used log.d, which makes the button has been pressed a debug message. So if I filter on debug, I only see the debug messages and those messages which are considered a bit more serious, like info messages, and up here some warnings. I can also use the search box here to filter the messages to only show me those with a particular piece of text. For example, if I put in dicey, it only shows me the messages that contain that piece of text. Okay, let's do a quick recap. A listener will report on a certain event happening, and the on-click listener will report if it detects a click. We can set an on-click listener on a button simply by writing the name of the button and then a dot, and then set on click listener. We then created the listener itself with the new keyword and had autocomplete insert this block of code for us. Finally, we started using the long count to check on what's going on inside our app. In the next video, I'll show you how to generate random numbers.